All right, lads. So today we are over on the, the BBS Reddit. Shout out to Sodex as always. We now have some information on Ichigo's attacks, more so his first strong attack. And in general, I want to talk about the character one more time. Uh, we're going to talk about the banner tomorrow because the banner will be getting announced. It is a 25-step banner, but right now, as it stands, we have no idea on how many fillers there are going to be and who the fillers are. Now, in my case, I'm summoning regardless, and this character is a character worth summoning for regardless of the filler pool. But if the fillers do turn you off, then that is a valid reason to skip the banner. Banner and wait for him to come back on a future banner with better characters at a later date in like six or so months time uh, But for today I want to talk about why this Ichigo is the best character in the game because you know yesterday's video was more so the reaction This time I'm taking a more deeper look into the character talk about some of the other things about him too And the future of power creep for the most part because this is definitely setting up for an insane power creep. Now, power creep in this game hasn't always been too bad. You know, we get, like, an, like the last time we received, like, a big power creep was, what, six months ago for the 10 years later characters? And then before them, it was, what, Misaki, maybe? And then also the fifth anti character. So we very rarely get characters like this on a monthly basis. And it, it's kind of a good thing the way Chaos Space out. It makes it so saving for these specific occasions are actually worth it if you do pull the character. Now, this character isn't an anniversary character. I think that's quite obvious. Some people were confused yesterday. But he definitely has been treated on the same level of anniversary characters. And for the most part, if you want to call this character the sixth anti Ichigo, you can because he's technically a secret anti character. He's releasing one week before the anniversary. He could have easily been thrown onto the main banner with potential anniversary eyes and Bekele don't want to do that so uh that being said though we're not going to talk about the banner rate we're not going to discuss anything else let's just talk about the character so the one big thing about this character is he's a technique character technique for the most part has been by far the weakest attribute in the game for a few years now actually it's been a very long time like you know, Power has access to 10 years later Rukia, Fifth Annie Ichigo, uh, Mind has characters like Koga, Candice, Daddy Ichigo, Speed has Fifth Anniversary Byakuya and some other good characters too, like the Thousand Year Blood War Ishin. And then Heart isn't as good too, but Heart does have access to Misaki and Tokunada, and those two definitely carry the Heart attribute. But Technique had nothing like that. They have a Wetsu, but Wetsu doesn't have poise, and he's not a ranged character. So personally, he's not on the same level as Toki and Misaki. But yeah, Tech just hasn't been that good. So the fact that we're getting this Ichigo now, and he's a technique character it's just more reasons to summon for him now in 2021 alone we've had been receiving some good tech characters more specifically the uh, machine society nemu and also the movie remake of kusaka who by the way and shout out to this lad right here for actually letting me know this those two characters have been now technically been outclassed not entirely because you know they have different killers more so the nemu has a different killer but they actually buffed this ichigo so imagine using this ichigo in the main team use nemu that she's giving uh, ichigo a 20 percent side buff and then have kusaka in the team so when ichigo does inflict the weakening he then has 20% more damage against that weakened enemy. Like, <laughs> Jesus. This character is, yeah, without even those two characters right there, buffing this Ichigo, he's already the best character in the game. But but if you are someone that has, like, Kusaka and Nemu, like, you're just making this Ichigo even better, which is absolutely insane to think about. Uh, in addition to that, he's also a 14 raid shot, so at the very least, if you, for some reason, are insane enough to not use his character and use him as a link, you can then give that character a 14 raid shot, which is always nice to have. Uh, in addition, one good thing I like about his character is the fact that he is a sorry for Hollow. Now, the main reason for for this is because one of the things that a lot of new players do experience when going into Senkamon is one of their first few hurdles that they're going to go against is a stage that will ask for a holo character and a lot of the times there's not that many good holo characters out there maybe you don't have access to them so having a character like this in your inventory is definitely going to be a huge plus and you'll never for the most part struggle against holo affiliation flaws which is always nice to have um, in addition again after that just it just keeps going lads Sorry, Pekilla, and no affiliation. That is perfect. And honestly, lads, I'm very salty that this character didn't get announced a day prior. Because if he did, I wouldn't have spent 5 kills for Fifani Ichigo. The main reason for me doing that was to get one Fifani duped out to Max. You know, try and get him 5-5. Five five. And it was also to get Mugetu 5-5 five five for the sole purpose of using him in the no affiliation guild quest week. And now this character exists, and he's significantly better. Now I get this character 5-5, five five, which hopefully I do. <laughs> um, I would just use him for GQ. So yeah, sorry, but I know affiliation killer is actually very good. Obviously, sorry for being one of the better killers in the game and then no affiliation is just like an added bonus now no affiliation isn't as common as you know the other main free killers that being hollow sorry but an aranka but it's still a nice killer to have you know you bet it's better to have it and not need it than need it not have it, in my opinion and then looking at his sp2 843 sp good lord is that the highest sp in the game yeah it literally is like <laughs> by 10 to like i mean the extra 10 doesn't matter that much quite frankly sp doesn't like i didn't really care about the stats but it, it's still just crazy to see that this character's 843 sp which is eight higher than you know characters that are 
are like these two characters right here, the Daddy Ichigo and da Mami Rukia. The Daddy Ichigo and the Mami Rukia, who were previously the holders of the highest SP in the game. I'm sure whatever the 6th anniversary character is going to be, they're probably going to break that. But still, seeing that high of an SP is still nice to see. And then let's talk about his innate skills, which is absolutely insane. All status immunity. Do you know how huge that is? Oh my god, that is absolutely huge. Just just thinking about that, like using this character in anything, you can put him on any quest and he is never going to get inflicted by a status on it. Now, all status immunity has been quite nice, you know, on the two characters that have had it previously, that being Gremi and the Manga Mayuri, but those two characters were never on the level of this character, so it wasn't that broken, but this on a character like this? Oh my god, like especially now that Arena exists and characters do like to inflict some status immunities, you know, uh, Byakuya inflicting last every five seconds, or a charm student, you have Shinji inflicting paralysis, he is never going to get inflicted by that, and if for some reason you do get caught off guard and someone does hit you, you're never going to get frozen, you're never going to get burned, you're never going to get weakened, If you, and that's a very good thing going back to the killer too, if you want to use a character in GQ, you never have to worry about the status of one on the floor, because you don't have to deal with it, because he's got immunity to everything, <laughs> so this is absolutely broken, and it's an innate skill too, so, like, it doesn't affect his other skills. Uh, in addition to that, you know, sprint to long stride. Um, it's not that big of a deal, to be fair, because every character nowadays can get it. But it's still nice to have. And it is sprinter plus two. It doesn't mention it here. So, he does have three flash steps and long stride. You can give it an extra flash step by getting to uh, T15 if you want to do that. Uh, but, again, it's just bad to have it and not need it. It now means that you don't have to waste a bonus ability. And, and even then, it's not a waste for other characters. It means you don't have to use a bonus ability to get the long stride because he already has it. Uh, you could then focus on giving him a skill that he doesn't have. Which, <laughs> surprisingly, he does have most skills out there. Um, you can give him, you know either full stam, or you could give him weakened defense, or you could give him hit underground enemies, which I'm definitely going to do. I'm probably going to hybrid it, give him weakened defense when he's a, when I'm using him in GQ. If I only have him 1-5, I'm probably going to give him full stam, and then I'm definitely going to give him hit, hidden enemies, and then he's going to be like the best character in the game. Like, it doesn't get better than that. I mean, it will in the future. We're going to have to wait and see how it gets better than that, but still, um, after that, bruiser plus 20%. Kind of a throwaway skill, but we'll talk about why his nad's actually kind of good. It's just bad to have it again. Uh, quite frankly, doesn't really impact the character all too much, but... It's definitely his weakest skill, but every SP character just has to get the minimum bruiser plus 20, which is not like damage, by the way. Uh, then he gets poise, which is... Like, just nice to have. You're never going to get staggered. It means you can use him in PvP. Although the PvP meta right now, and I am talking about Brave Battles, not Arena, is obviously prioritizing characters that have the 10-second invincibility, which he doesn't go through. So, you know, he's not really going to be seen much in Brave Battles, at least. But it's still nice to have poise, especially in stuff like Arena, for example, where, again, you're not going to get staggered. You can just use your strong attacks non-stop. If someone does, for some reason, hit you, you're not going to get caught. And, like, I know for NAD characters, more specifically in Arena, if you get hit with a NAD string, or let's say you're about to use a strong attack, you have to get up close and personal just to get that strong attack to go off and an enemy hits you and then you get staggered and then you get trapped it's very annoying and it's especially with this character like here because he does have poise it means it's someone like Byakuya for example if they do use their SA2 on you in arena you're not going to get stuck in that you can just flash step out of it and he has long stride and two extra flash steps he's never going to get trapped like this character is absolutely broken the poise just goes to it too 20% havoc increasing the range of all his strong attacks just overall very very nice 60% berserker like, that, that's insane. And it was insane last year. It's still insane to this day. 60% Berserker is very rarely ever put onto a lot of characters. It's very rarely put onto a lot of characters. And the fact that he has that, plus weakening on all his attacks, is the exact same reason why a 5th anniversary Ichigo is OP. Because Berserker plus 60 and weakening is, is huge. It's absolutely huge. And, like... He has it, which is just even more insane. Uh, Frenzy, you know, doubling the hits is what you love to see. It's basically the st stock standard for an SP character. Then he has Bombardment. Um, I actually need to double check. Does any character... I, I'm, I'm going to say no. Me okay, there are actually a few. I believe Maria Master has it. But Bombardment plus Weakening is OP. That is OP right there, lads. And he has it. So someone like Daddy Ichigo, for example, using him in Guild Quest. It's nice that he has Bombardment. Same goes for Byakuya. But the fact is, when you do use your Soul Bomb and you get to the final wave of the boss... They don't have any status elements inflicted onto them, which kind of does suck, but it doesn't mean they're not, it doesn't mean they're bad. It just means that they could have been better. And this Ichigo has weakening, which just makes him even more better because it means you're doing even more damage. Now, weakening was obviously a tad bit nerfed in GQ, especially the hard difficulty of GQ, but still, when he uses Soul Bomb, those eight hits, all inflicting weakening, 
it's still going to do a lot of damage. And you still have those two seconds where you can let off a strong attack or your teammates can let a strong attack off. Or overall, they can just use those two seconds to do a lot of nasty damage, which is just nice to see. But Bombardment on the SP character is absolutely huge, by the way. In stuff like Inheritance Trials, where some characters, if you don't have Bombardment, can't really nuke an entire stage, of, especially if it's a big one. Having Bombardment is absolutely huge. It makes your clearing a lot faster. So I love to see that on a character like this. And the a plus five, just making it so he, if he does inflict the weakening, they're going to be weakened for an extra five seconds. And then Marauder, Guard Break, plus Ignore Media Resistance, absolutely huge. Again, it means you can use him in an extra week of GQ. It means he's the perfect character for Extreme Carp, which is nice. No longer just have to use Nini, no longer just have to use any other character, but this character right here. And overall, just skill-wise, he's absolutely stacked, and by far one of like, the best characters in the game, right? Now, in addition to that, and this is where the Power Creep is starting to kick in, in not only the skills, but the attacks. Now, firstly, he has a new Night String. So his first two attacks are going to have a 150 radius around him, or in front of him for the most part. And the last two hits of the next string is going to be AoE. Very nice to see, right? You love to have those AoE attacks. Now, what's huge here? Now, keep in mind, he is an SP character, so his next string isn't all that big. But let's say, for example, a future nerd character gets a next string like this. That's going to be huge because, as you can see right here, his range on his next string, lad, is 425. At least for the first two hits, the third and fourth hit are 400, but... He doesn't have long reach. And I did mention in my video yesterday, this character looks like he has long reach, but he doesn't. And that's because his natural range on his nad string is higher than characters that don't normally have long reach, right? Even characters with long reach don't really get this type of range. Let me quickly double check. Yeah, so a character with long reach normally gets a 450 radius nad string, which again is huge for a nad character, especially melee ones where one of their biggest problems with melee characters is they don't have the best range. And imagine a nad character with flurry and guard break with this kind of nad string, and they get long reach. That means those first two hits are going to have a 500 radius. Like, it matters. It, it really does make a big difference if that ever did happen. And now that this Nad String does exist, it's definitely in the future, lads, going to be put into a Nad character that is going to be melee based, that is going to have guard break, and it's just going to make them a naturally better character than those that don't have it. So I very much do appreciate this. This is actually insane. Now, obviously, he is an SP character. It doesn't matter too much, but... The, it's always nice just to have that extra bit of range, right? It's always nice to have it. Now, going into his strong attack one, this is the funny part, right? So, as we all saw yesterday in the gameplay, his SA1 did look quite different. Well, it turns out, it's not a new strong attack. It's an SA2. That's for an SA1. Like, what? So, you're telling me this character for an SA1 got a strong attack that other characters get for an SA2. This is huge, because again, like, this is the first time we've actually seen this, and this could open up the possibility, and I don't think this will ever happen, but again, now that this exists, the possibility is always there. Imagine, let's say, two years from now, right? We get a character with a 960 SA2 for an SA1. Like, imagine that. Like, that's just... <laughs> I don't even want to think about that, but uh, this strong attack in general for an SA2 isn't all too bad. It's the, uh, you know, vacuum vortex similar to what Shuhei has. Uh, Shuhei is just a tad bit different. I think it's in a different order, but you can see here that this is how the SA2 does work. So it's a circle type strong attack into a fan, AoE dist into an AoE, 750 into a 750, starts with 20% magnification, and then ends with 100. So most of the damage comes from the second part of the attack. So... That's insane. Like, for an SA2, it's an okay strong attack too. Like, it's nothing amazing, but it's a good... It's a decent enough strong attack too, right? It could be worse. But this character has it as an SA1. Like, come on. Come on. <laughs> now, funny enough, a 3000 then beam for an SA1 might just be a tad bit better, but still, this is just... It's different. It, it, it's a different... It's a completely different playstyle. Being able to dish off an SA2 for the most part every 8 seconds, and this isn't with the full recharge. So, with full recharge, you get, like, a 4 second cooldown... Dishing out an SA2 every 4 seconds is huge. It's absolutely huge. And I very much do like what they've done with this SA1. It's the same strong attack that we've seen a lot of times with other characters. But the fact that it's SA1 just makes it feel different. And I like that. It changes up his gameplay just a tad bit. It makes him feel a tad bit unique. And at the same time it doesn't ruin the character, because if this character had S this strong attack as an SA2, he wouldn't be nearly as good, because for his SA2, he still has that 960 AoE distance strong attack, which, again, for the most part, is the best strong attack to do in the game, with the exception of Byakuya, who has this strong attack, but has an added Vortex to it. Obviously, if he had the Vortex attack along with that, yeah, it just would have been even more better, but regardless, it's still the best strong attack to it. It comes out very quickly, too, which is always a nice thing to see, and then his SA3 is just a full screen attack, and then obviously his Soul Bomb inflicting weakening, you know, giving weakening in defense with bombardment it's going to be one of the hardest hitting specials in the game up there with someone like bankai shuei obviously bankai shuei is still going to do way more damage with this album but ichigo will like be up there maybe second place if you want to look at the damage numbers but yeah with that said lads that was the uh breakdown for this character once more i know we talked about it yesterday but yesterday was more so reaction to me actually seeing the character this time 
this character is insane. Uh, definitely the future power creep. We're going to probably start seeing more characters with similar treatment, you know, potentially getting strong attack freeze as an SA2. Imagine. <laughs> I doubt it, but imagine that if it did happen. Um, if it does, you know, that'd be in a few years from now, probably. And uh, looking through strong attacks too, you know, bombardment with a status omen on the soul bomb is insane. Long stride plus splinter built into the character is also insane. All status immunity. This character is perfect, man. Honestly, he is perfect. There's obviously still ways to make him better. Uh, if he had a 3,000 MP, beam, probably would have been a tad bit better, but it's not that big of a deal, personally. Uh, he's still, again, the best character in the game right now, and he's definitely worth something for it. Again, we'll talk about that tomorrow when we do get the banner information. Hoping the fillers are good. Hoping there's not too many fillers, and I'm hoping the fillers are good because it's just going to make it uh, better when you are summoning if you do get a tad bit shafted. But that being said, let me know what you guys think of this character now that you've had like, a day to settle in the fact that how broken he is, what skills he has, what are you most excited? excited for and I'll see you at the next one. Peace.